Here's the thing that most course creators don't realize. You don't need to be a tech genius or spend thousands of dollars on complicated software to build a successful online course. In fact, most people overcomplicate the entire process and end up never launching because they get stuck in the technical weeds. But what if I told you that there's a platform that combines course creation, community building, and payment processing all in one simple, easy to use interface. That's so intuitive, you could have your first course live and ready to sell in just a few hours, not weeks or months. In this complete beginner's guide, I'll show you exactly how to use school to build, launch, and scale your online course from scratch. We'll cover everything from how to set up your school community, how to host your online course, and how to schedule events so that you can engage with your students. Whether you're a coach, consultant, expert, or someone with valuable knowledge to share, this step-by-step -step tutorial will transform you from a complete beginner into someone who can confidently create and sell online courses that actually get results for your students. If you want to follow along with me in this tutorial, you can join school using the link below for a free 14-day trial. It's the easiest way to get started and see how everything works in real time. Let's start by getting you set up with school. So click on the link down below in the description and you'll reach a homepage that looks like this. You wanna go ahead and click on this button here where it says create your own and simply just click on create your community. And they do have some basically social proof here that you can see that this click free school makes around 6,000. This one here makes 32,000. Click on create your community and let's enter in your information. And then go ahead and create a password and then click on sign up. Once you click on sign up, school is going to send you a code that you need to go ahead and verify. Now from here, you need to select a school plan. Just recently, school released their $9 a month plan, which is the hobby plan. And out of all the online course hosting platforms that I've used, this is practically the cheapest plan that I've ever seen an online course hosting platform actually offer. Aside from Teachable's free plan, which is very, very limited. So you can see that between the hobby plan and the pro plan, all features are included. You get unlimited members and unlimited courses. I'd say the biggest thing is that the 10% transaction fee is really kind of detrimental. I personally don't like transaction fees and getting a 10% transaction fee, it's it's pretty steep, okay? Compared to other transaction fees where Circle Stan is 7%, 7 6%. So if you want to just try out school, you can just do the hobby plan. But if you do plan on scaling and as you get more members, you're getting consistent signups every month. I highly recommend that you get the pro plan. But for now, because I wanted to showcase how to set up school, we're just going to go with the $9 a month plan, which is the hobby plan, which still includes all the features. So click on try for free. For the group name, we're going to call it a Pokemon Collector group and then go ahead and enter your card information and then click on start free trial. So the first thing you need to do is complete your profile. So we're going to go ahead and click on the profile icon and then we're just going to select an image of me right over here. And as far as the bio goes, we're just going to say full time YouTuber, former physical therapist. And we'll also say full time YouTuber and Pokemon card collector. Then click on complete. So now we have a bio. Now, when you first enter a school, one of the main things about it is that it isn't really like a customizable website. So most school communities look pretty much similar to each other. I mean, the only difference is just simply the branding. So with the branding, you can upload your cover photo, you can upload your logo. But when you first reach a school page, this is what it's gonna look like. And this is the discussion board. So we can say something here where it's like, you can write a post, say, welcome to our community and we'll say, please feel free to share your card collections. And so with the school post, you can attach links, you can attach images, videos, you can link to a YouTube video, you can add polls, add GIFs. And one thing I like about school is that you can make like different filter discussions. So maybe you wanna have discussions related to card collecting. Maybe you ha wanna have discussions related to figurine collecting. Maybe you wanna have discussions related to investing. So with school, there, this tab right here, or this drop down menu is really useful when it comes to filtering out different messages. But we're just gonna keep this as general discussion and then click on post. And now we've made our first post within the school community. And right over here, this is the filtering option that I was mentioning before as far as different ways to filter your discussions, just so it just doesn't look like one really large giant thread. Other ways to organize your discussions within your school community include here, so you can organize it by default, new, top, or unread. And then moving on, we're just gonna go from left to right sequence. 
If you click on Classroom, this is where you're going to upload your course. So if we click on New Course, we can call this Zero to Pokemon Card Collector. So I'm going to create a mock course teaching people how to collect Pokemon cards, for example. So this is the All oh, Get Started Collecting. So course description, course name, and you can also upload a cover. So we're just going to go ahead and upload one of our mock covers that we had created. So here we have a cover that we can upload. So we'll just go ahead and use this. So we can click on Upload. And we'll click on our cover, click on open, and then click on save. So now we have a cover image for our course. And down below here, you can either mark it as published or as a draft. So right now we're going to leave it as a draft just because this mock course isn't fully completed yet. And then over here, you have different access levels. So members can access it all at once when they join your community. Or maybe members need to reach a certain level in order to access this course. Or maybe members need to pay a one-time purchase to unlock this course. So let's say that they join your community for free and you want to go ahead and add a paywall to this course, you can do that as well. Members can also unlock this course after being in your community for a certain amount of days. And then you also have a private access. So you can give a private access to different members of this course. But we're just going to leave it to be an open access for anyone who joins this community is also going to be able to join this course. So now we're gonna click on add. So if we go back to Classroom, you can see that we now have one course added to our school community group. If we click into this, this is where you're going to be adding your lessons, worksheets, any downloadable PDFs. So what we'll do is that we'll edit this page here and we'll call this page how to collect and click on save. Now in order to edit a course, all you've got to do is just click into the course. And then when you click on these three dots here, you have two different options. You can either actually add a course page or you can add a folder. So I added both of them here. This right here is a folder. This is a way to organize your lessons and the pages itself. If you click on add page, this is what's going to house your actual video lessons. So if we have how to click right over here and then we click on the edit option, we can click on this video option. And then we can drag and drop a video here. So what we're going to do is that we're going to drag and drop how to collect right over there. And then it's going to start uploading that file. So a lot of questions I often get asked is how big of a file can you actually upload onto school? And to give you an idea, this file here was about 1.5 gigabytes. And it's just going to take a couple minutes to go ahead and upload, at which point we'll click on save. But while we wait for this to upload, let's go ahead and move on to other classroom aspects. So other things you can do, if we go into this new page here and click on edit, you can add just some simple text. You can add a resource link. You can add a pin community post. You can save this as a draft. You can insert images. You can add YouTube links, Loom video links, Vimeo links, or Wistio links as course lessons as well. But there's a lot of different ways you can basically just customize your online course when it comes to hosting your online course onto school. So now that we have our first lesson uploaded, again, that was about a 1.5 gigabyte lesson. We're just going to let this process and let's go ahead and visit the calendar tab now. So with the calendar tab, the actual school community that I'm a part of, this is where we basically host our online coaching calls. So you can add the title of your event. So let's say that we want to title this event Pokemon Investing Discussions. You can decide the date, the time, and how long this meeting will take. Set your time zone. You could have this event recur. So maybe you want to have this happen every Monday and you never want it to end. Or maybe you want to have it end after a certain month or after a certain amount of occurrences. You can also set the location. So if you want your online hosting event to be posted on Zoom, Meeting, or Google Meets, or an actual address that can be inserted as well. You could upload a cover image. You can decide who can attend this event. And you could also send members a reminder email one day before the event actually happens as well. But the calendar tab is going to be really great. And one thing I like about it is that let's say that we have a discussion happening today at, let's say, at 8, 8, 8 p.m. And we're just going to make it a one-time event set it for one and a half hours and then we're going to say it's a in-person meeting then click on add so when you add an event to your calendar it actually shows up as a headline over here and this is a really crucial place just because a lot of people are going to be seeing the community portion of your tab and the next event that's going to happen will have a slight headline here so that members of your community can see when the next event actually happens so this is a really important one they can just click in and then click on add to calendar so they can add it to their google calendar apple microsoft calendar and that's pretty much it so this is a really great way for online coaches to coordinate group coaching calls or sessions with their community next tab we have is the members tab so this is just where you're going to see all your members who are currently active in your community 
if you have a paid membership, you're gonna see community members who have canceled, who have churned, and who have been banned as well. But a really nice area to kind of get a glimpse of all these member bios, what day they joined, what type of access they have. It's all different ways to kind of filter the members of your community. So you can actually export this list as well. And one thing to keep in mind is that when it does export, this is the data that's going to give you. All right, so let me go ahead and open it up in the numbers application. So it's going to give you their first name, last name. It's gonna give you their email, I believe. And that's also gonna give you the invited by, their join date, and also the questions, if you have questions that you want them to answer prior to actually joining. So yeah, with the email, I do believe it gives their email. I'll have to double check on that, but in case you're interested in exporting all your members' data onto school and putting it into like an email marketing funnel, that's the type of data that's gonna show you. Now this map tab here, this is something that's fairly new to school. I don't personally use this just yet. I guess it just shows where everyone is within your school community. So one of the main things about school is that it really does prioritize community-driven efforts first. So this is just one of the ways they did it. So if you're part of a school community and you find that a few people are within your location, it might be a good way to kind of connect with other people within your community, especially if you share the common interests. I mean, you guys are part of the same school group possibly, right? Now with leaderboards, this kind of seems gimmicky. I don't really use this across many of my school groups, but you can gamify discussions onto school. So people will start to gain levels as they participate in your school group, but it kind of is like a double-edged sword where sometimes your members, what they'll do is that they'll basically just say, great job, good work, congratulations. So it's kind of like one worded replies and it doesn't, it kind of depletes the meaning of like meaningful discussions that can be taking place within your community. So I don't really use this all too much. I know some school communities who use this quite successfully, especially when you attach a classroom lesson to the leaderboards. Like let's say that you have an advanced portion of your course in which only level nine members will have access to, that's one way to do it, right? And so the leaderboard is gonna show activity based on a seven day, 30 day, and all time time frame. And then over here, we have the about page. So this is a bit where you can customize your school community group. So recall earlier how I mentioned that school doesn't really have a lot of customization to it. It's very simple. That can be seen as a pro and a con. But if you wanna upload an image here, like let's say let's upload our cover image. We'll do this one here. Or you can add a YouTube video or link as well as like an introduction video. And then you can also add a description. So this group is dedicated to Pokemon card collectors. That's another way to do it as well. If you want to click on save. And then if you click on settings, there's a lot of settings here. So you can see the subscriptions. If you have a paid membership, how many people have visited your page, how many signups you've gotten, how it's the conversion rate. You could also invite people to your group link. So this is the actual group link to your school group. And then over here in the general tab, you, you can change your group name. You can add your icon. You can add your cover image to your group also decide on your group description. Now the pro plan is going to allow you to customize your URL. You can set your group to private or public. Now for payouts, this is where you, if you have a paid membership, this is where you can start requesting payouts. For the pricing structure, you can add give members a seven day free trial. You can add a price monthly and annual. So I like how school recently included this option as well. Or you can include a one-time payment for people to join your school group as well. If you want to offer affiliates, school already has that integrated within its platform. So as people start to join your school community, you can offer them a 30% affiliate commission, but it looks like it's a pro plan though. So with the pro plan, yeah, you'll get plugins and affiliates. Now plugins is something that's currently ongoing where you can have different integrations with school. So you can auto DM new members. You can have Metapixel tracking. You can have Zapier integration. Among my school groups, I don't really use plugins. I don't really like to make it so complicated. But even so, this is the membership questions where you can actually turn on if you want people to answer questions prior to joining your group. Now with tabs, I always recommend keeping these on. I mean, the map tab is the newest tab that I've seen. Maybe you don't want to display where member locations are within the world. And then with categories, this is the filtering option that I mentioned earlier in the video where you can add different filters for your discussions. So let's say that we wanna add a filter called investing and then we wanna sort it by default and then we wanna add another filter called sealed product collecting. And then let's say we wanna add another filter called wins. So with that, and then if we exit out and we go back to community, you can see that we have different filters for different discussions. And this is gonna be a good way for your 
community members to basically interact in a more niche subject rather than just having a very, very long discussion board. Now moving on from that, we have the rules. So you can add rules and these rules are gonna be, I think they're displayed within the right-hand side column of your school community group. You can also make it so that your school community group is discovered by the actual school search bar. And then you have metrics here, just another way to actually look at your total members, your active members and your daily activity. And of course you have your billing. So with the billing uh, right now, I'm on a 14 day free trial just to kind of showcase this video, but you can update your payment method. You can manage your description or subscription and you can also delete your group. Now moving on to the class, back to the classroom tab, let's go ahead and check out our lesson. So right now it's still processing. I guess it was a pretty big video file, but while that video edits, I mean, you can see that it's the video right over there. So it looks like it's done. You can add some text underneath. So this video is about how to collect. And you could also add what I mentioned before, kind of like resource files or downloadable files. Let's say we want them to download an image of me within this lesson. And we'll say PDF guide and then click on add and then click on save. So this is what it's actually going to look like when someone accesses this course. So they can play the video In this first module, and it's gonna be hosted on school. They can see the description and they could also access the resources guide with the PDF guide being my face. Once they're done watching the lesson, they can mark it as done. And the percentage bar should auto-populate, I believe. Well, I guess it's just set to draft, so we mark it as done. Let's actually go ahead and publish this course. So we'll click on there, click on the three dots, edit course, and we're gonna click on draft to publish. And so now the course has been published and it is live for other students to see. Now the PC icon, I just wanna point out that in order to edit that out, go ahead and click on the about page and then click on the settings of your school community group, then click on general. And this is where you can change the icon. So maybe you wanna change it to my face once again. And we'll just do that and then click on save. So that right there is pretty much it guys, as far as how to go ahead and get started with school. And again, at any time you feel like joining in and rewatching this video in order to set up your school account, do check out the link down below in the description where you can get a 14 day free trial. 14 days is most certainly enough to go ahead and try out school for yourself. But thanks so much for watching everyone and I'll see you guys all in the next video.